we really want to do GL, but we can't do it broad daylight. So we're giving you the clues for you to figure it out. Shuangjing. Couple of Mirrors is a 12 episodes Chinese web drama on the platform Billy Billy. I know I'm quite late to the game, but I have finally managed to catch up with it. This drama is produced by the production company Dongyang Huan Yu, which belongs to Yu Zheng, unfortunately. And also Billy Billy, led by Zhang Nan, Sun Han. As a 12 episode short drama, it is really easy for me to run through it, so this is a final review. I'll give this drama a one goat mine rating on my seven level scale, but it would be a one goat mine drama that I've enjoyed quite a bit more than my normal <laughs> one goat mine drama. As usual, first I'll talk about a few details and what the story is about, and then the good and the bad. There are a couple of things that is quite interesting about this production. First, it is directed by a director called Li Da Chao, who for the longest time actually worked as a kung fu director. This is not a rare thing in Chinese drama land. You'll see a lot of mainland productions these days actually having directors who previously worked mostly for Hong Kong productions as wuxia fighting scene directors. This drama, as it's listed, is written by two script writers. Both are women, and one of them is actually the author of Princess Agent, the original IP novel that got into a plagiarizing case and lost. So if we try to use one word to talk about the background in terms of companies, writers, all that of this production, that would be complicated. Yu Zheng is currently one of those people in Chinese entertainment business that um, is not welcomed in many places. For this production, he didn't take part in the writing or the directing or any of that. He wrote the lyrics for all three songs you're gonna hear as original soundtracks. All those informations aside, let me quickly tell you what this story is about if you haven't watched it yet, which I doubt if you clicked open this video. It is set in the city of Shanghai at the beginning of Ming Guo period, and we're introduced to the first female character who shows up as the main character, played by Zhang Nan, Xu Yu Yi. She is a well known famous novel writer who is married to a guy who is the second generation of a rather powerful politician. She enjoys the fame, the money that comes to her privileged lifestyle, but she also realized unfortunately that her husband is cheating on her. Through some very intricate and interesting accident and incidents happening, her fate got entangled with another woman who owns a photography shop and makes her living by taking photos. But in reality, she had a much more complicated and crazier past history than you can possibly imagine. They eventually form a very interesting, with a quotation mark, friendship. And because of their bond and friendship to each other, they helped each other out of their life's difficulties. Now, let's talk about the things first that are really well done for this drama. First thing, I really encourage short form dramas from Chinese dramaland because it's been plagued by overrun, super long, draggy, and watered down content for too long. 2021, we've seen quite a couple of very short dramas that have done really well and have been very well received. And we see the trend of more and more shorter dramas being made in this way, and I highly, highly appreciate this change. The second thing I like about this drama is, particularly in this first third of the story, it has a very strong vibe of a type of classic crime thriller mystery. Although it's by no means masterpiece writing or on-screen representation of this genre, the way it is told, the narrative orders of things, what they decide to show up at what episode and how Everything happens one after another, showing two different characters, two point of views of the same thing, and arriving at the first climax of the drama when you realize the two narrative line converge and oh, this is why this happens. First third of the drama really did that well. Although later in the drama, because of how the story develops, this type of narrative no longer continues, but at least for the beginning part of this drama, I really loved how they decided to tell the story. If you're a big detective drama watcher, you will be very familiar with how it's done, far exceeding my expectation of a rather low budget, short form, web only drama. The third thing I like about this drama, and I think it's the main thing why it is rather well received within the Billy Billy community. They did cast the right actresses for those two roles. 
Whether it is the appearance side of things, the look of the actresses, what type of vibe they give you on screen, or the way they act and play the roles, or how they come together. Physically, they're both very tall, and it's rare to come across two actresses who are that tall in Chinese drama land. And when they come together on screen, how comfortable they're in each other's presence, all of that worked out pretty well. For this type of definitely riding on the main two leads relationship drama, if that doesn't work, it kind of fails at least 50% already. It's a fortunate thing for the casting choices of this drama that they did the right choice. The final thing about this drama that I like is general completeness of the story. Both the thriller detective kind of line, most of the main characters arc, although not perfectly done, and then the relationship line. So everything is kind of taken care of and suggesting there might be a future second season story of how it develops. So as a low budget short form drama that doesn't feature any big stars in any way, this is pretty nicely completed. So those are the good things about this drama that I enjoyed a lot. Now let me talk about the things that I think are not ideal for this drama. First, being accurate to its time. I know it's a fictional story. It's very, very fictional. And there's no way that it actually happens in any way with that time setting and place. But if you're putting it at Republic of China, early time Shanghai, there's actually a lot of things you can research into. Even the woman's hairstyle, their clothing style, what are the products that's being available at the time if you want to be really, really detailed and accurate and filled with texture, you can. But this drama, when it's regarding Mingguo, it really just didn't really bother with much of the, its details in all departments. Plus the language, the lines, the specific words people use, there are a lot of very contemporary vocabulary expressions that only exist today. Like in 2020, 2021, it's so up to date that I often got pulled out of the story because of certain things and expressions people said. Most likely due to low budgeting, uh, they wouldn't have a professional team doing research and then once they've researched it, not necessarily having all the money to make the props and stuff happen. The second thing is to do with the two main characters and writing of them. I think it's a rather uneven story writing. Although we know this is a two female lead drama, you have Zhang Lan and Sun Yihan's characters should be 50-50. But honestly, when you watch a drama, it's more like 70-30. Xu Youyi's character played by Zhang Nan, she doesn't just have more screen time, her story is much more fully developed. Her character also has gotten much, much more attention from the writer. You know her background, you know what she's gone through before she met her current husband, and you know what happened with their relationship. Everything is pretty much told in very detailed fashion, whereas Sun Yihan's character, Yan Wei, from the beginning till the end, she first didn't really go through a significant arc, second, you just don't quite know that much about her. You know, she learned her sort of assassin skill in a fictional war. It's not explained in the drama exactly what kind of organization took her, what type of war she went through as a fighter, and how she got back, and how like every detail is not explained. And I try to figure out if she was on a foreign soil as a teenager, was machine guns fighting, what that could be, like where. And that part definitely just cuts down the believability of her character setup. I mean, she's cool, okay, as a female character who um, knows guns and knives and uh, has this secret chamber in her photography shop that pretty much is taken from all kinds of American superheroes, dungeon equipment room kind of design. But it doesn't fit any historical possibilities. So the grounding of Yan Wei's role is very shaky, it's very fictional, and it's totally for the dramatic storytelling's purpose. Building upon that, there's hardly any development that happens throughout this drama. Although I like the actress's performance, I think she did a good job. It's totally on the writing side that her character just didn't receive enough attention, enough care, enough thought through. It's almost like she is the tool person for Xu Yi's role. She's the person who comes to her rescue. And the only help that Xu Yi can provide for her is to make her be more human. <laughs> so this particular girl and girl relationship 
is rather imbalanced, and their weight to the narrative is also not very equal. But then I understand because the character setup is so weird, maybe because of censorship and this and that, couldn't go too far from reality when it's already rather far from reality. Which leads to the third point of things that are not ideal is clearly the ending. The voiceover part when they said Yan Wei's row got sentenced to prison for 15 years is just to get through censorship. Supposedly bad people will have to get punished. <laughs> At the end of the story, that is the rule. And Yan Wei as a character, she did commit murder. She has to get punishment. But it doesn't make sense. You know, when you watch a drama to that point, there's nothing that can really make her go to prison apart from she decided to go into police station herself, which does not follow any logic of the drama. And with a couple of shots of what happened later, it's suggesting a future second season. So if you've watched the drama and enjoyed it up to that point of the ending, just ignore the voiceover. Think about it, they're together, two girls, and they've kind of solved all the big problems in their life. Now, Yan Wei has a visitor from the past with the white rose coming back, and the second season should be more focused on her, about her background story and who is coming back and what kind of threat it brings into her life. Now she has a roommate slash girlfriend. <laughs> in her life. So these are the points that I can think of after watching this drama. There's one cute thing, detail, uh, I think most people know, but if you don't, there is a scene when Xiu Yi was stepping on the floorboard <laughs> that got already taken care of by Yan Wei after she moved in, and it no longer triggers the two huge axes flying <laughs> in the sky. She took out her makeup lipstick and drew that emoji on the board with a winking smiling face that is the icon of an app called rella previously now it's called the l which is queer women community app it's actually developed in china <laughs> In case you don't know what that is. So it's clearly suggesting we really want to do GL, but we can't do it broad daylight. So we're giving you the clues for you to figure it out. At the end of this review, I would say this is a rather enjoyable drama, but you do need to go in with a reasonable level of expectation. You wouldn't feel the 12 episodes of time after you're watching a drama is wasted. That would be, I think, a good enough reason to go and uh, have a try of it. In terms of being... GL or GL adaptation, it really hasn't gone to any extensive level of it. Although the two actresses in their interviews and stuff are very <laughs> relaxed about this kind of topic, in the drama itself, it is not explicit in any way. And compared to the already at a different development stage BL drama in Chinese drama land. The GL dramas are very far behind. It has a much smaller community of people who are interested in it and it's barely, barely starting to get anywhere. So with reasonable expectation and a relaxed kind of attitude, you can go into this drama and you probably will enjoy it. Hope that's been useful to you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.